Well, thank you so much. It's so great to be here. What an honor to receive uh, the Showman Award. I want to thank Dr. Bob for all he's done. It's just been a been a great friend uh, to so many great causes. And uh, I want to thank Mort Klein for the great introduction. You know, Mort mentioned uh, we did this state trip to Israel uh, my first year as governor. And when I went to the Western Wall, I had to do a prayer, as many of you know, and um, I made the prayer to have no hurricanes in the state of Florida. So I put it in the wall, walked out, the media asked me what you prayed for, I told them. And um, I think most of you know, at some point during the summer, there was a, a little disturbance um, in the Atlantic and in the Caribbean uh, that became Hurricane Dorian. And we watched it, people said, oh, it may not be, it may, then all of a sudden, it comes around Puerto Rico and basically looking like a beeline to Florida. And so as that was happening, people started murmuring, oh, well, I guess your prayers didn't work, all this other stuff. Um, and so it's going, going. Obviously, it did a lot of damage into the Bahamas. But while it was going over the Bahamas, it stopped for 36 hours and spun and then all of a sudden did a 90 degree turn north and missed the state of Florida. So I don't know what you attribute that to, but I know what I attribute that to. Mort mentioned uh, my time in the Congress, and although I am a governor, uh, I'm still effectively, I guess, a recovering congressman, having spent six years uh, in the swamp in D.C. And I, when I see some of my old colleagues, they'll ask me, oh, they'll say, oh, man, we really miss you up here. And I'm like, well, I don't miss you guys. I'm doing just fine where I'm at. Um, and, and it's just a different environment. We can get a lot more done as governor. But the truth is, uh, that together with ZOA, during those years in Congress, uh, we made a great difference uh, to support the U.S.-Israel relationship. You know, Mort mentioned the Jerusalem Embassy and, and what we did to do make that on the front burner. I had no doubt that the President was going to follow through, but I also know he had people in cabinet agencies and the bureaucracy who did not want us to recognize Jerusalem and did not want the embassy in Jerusalem. And so it was a matter of teeing it up and making it something that the public was keyed on. This subcommittee hearing is probably the biggest subcommittee hearing we ever did in Congress. I mean, the whole thing was filled and everything. It was really, really good. Um, and that really teed it up to, and the president deserves credit, not just for making the decision, but he had to overrule a lot of his advisors, uh, the bureaucracy and the State Department, the bureaucracy and in some of the intelligence agencies um, and he followed through and did what was right so we really appreciate that and um, it was such an honor to be there and Mort was there some of you were there May of 2018 where the new embassy uh, was dedicated and so that was a historic occasion and um, I'm awful happy to be able to participate in there and then the following May, as Mort mentioned, I came back leading a state delegation from Florida, and we actually conducted a meeting of the Florida cabinet in the embassy in Jerusalem, which was really historic. So that was great progress, but I just think it's important to point out when we say that we recognize Jerusalem and our embassies in Jerusalem, we mean all of Jerusalem. It's the in indivisible, etern indivisible and eternal capital of Israel. We also helped lead recognition of the Golan Heights, as Mort mentioned. That was something that made very strategic, great strategic sense. Uh, it was the right thing to do for the U.S.-Israel relationship, and the president deserves credit uh, for, for making that decision. Again, contrary to what many of the bureaucrats wanted to be done there. When we were in Congress, uh, I felt it was my obligation to tell the truth about the Arab-Israeli conflict. Uh, the fact of the matter is the problem isn't because the Israelis are building apartments in Jerusalem. The problem is the consistent rejection by Palestinian Arabs of Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. They pay families of Palestinian terrorists uh, when they commit acts of terrorism against Israelis. They name schools and sports stadiums after suicide bomber. There is no moral equivalence whatsoever between Israel and the Palestinian Arabs. 
We also had to speak out against an organization just down the road from here, the United Nations, which has become a theater of the absurd when it comes to the state of Israel. The UN resolution that they pushed through at the end of the Obama administration, 2334, that said that the Western Wall in the old city of Jerusalem was, quote, occupied territory, was really just the cherry on the Sunday for the absurdity of that organization. Uh, we obviously rejected that, but I think it's important to point out the truth about Judea and Samaria. The fact of the matter is this is not occupied territory. Uh, this was not, as Mort said, ever a Palestinian state. It was controlled by the British for decades after World War I. It had been controlled by the Turks for hundreds of years prior to that. The original Balfour Declaration had all of this land to be earmarked for a Jewish state. And when you had the UN partition plan in the late 40s, it did provide for Arab state, but guess what? The Arabs rejected that partition plan and went to war against the state of Israel. So Israel has the best claim of right of anybody onto the lands of Judea and Samaria. Now, I promise, as Mort said, to be the most pro-Israel governor in the United States when I was running. Uh, I can tell you the guy I was running against would not have been the most pro-Israel governor in the United States. Um, and and we, we have kept our promise on that. You know, the Airbnb situation started uh, when I was governor-elect. I hadn't even taken office yet, um, but I was um, publicly uh, did the shot across the bow and said, look, this is not going to stand in Florida. And uh, I thought that they would, at that point, immediately reevaluate. They didn't. So as soon as I got into office, we added Airbnb onto the scrutinized companies list under our anti-BDS legislation. And we did get change, which is very, very important. So we won that because we were willing to use our, our office and use the pressure to do what was right. And so that really started the administration off on a strong foot. And I think that that was, had we not taken that stand with Airbnb, this would have become a cottage industry. You would have had all these other companies trying to do this, trying to virtue signal to the left, um, and it would have been a disaster. So we saw the threat and we took action. We also, in our budget uh, that was enacted, we had record funding for security for Jewish day schools in Florida. We're not going to tolerate a tax on people going to Jewish schools. We signed, I signed one of the toughest anti-Semitism bills in the entire country. We're not going to have our colleges and universities promoting BDS with tax dollars. And we did, as was mentioned, lead the largest ever delegation from the state of Florida to Israel in May of 2019. We have all kinds of collaborations now between Israeli universities and Florida universities. We have a continued and expanded partnership with respect to space exploration. Uh, obviously a lot of great economic ties. And I'm the first governor in history to ever do public events in Judea and Samaria. We did a big event at Ariel University. So I think the relationship is key to America's national security, but I also think it's something that's very beneficial for the state of Florida. So I was happy to be able, you know, on the Foreign Affairs Committee, fighting with Mort on all these issues for all those years, and I think we made a difference. But I'll tell you, as governor, you can make a difference as well. We're doing that. And all I can say is, I prayed at the Western Wall this May, the hurricane turned north, so I guess I'm going to have to go back next May, pray again, and keep the hurricanes away. Thank you, guys. God bless everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.